Well, good morning. We're going to go ahead and start by worshiping the Lord together. If you'd stand with us, we're going to sing an old familiar hymn. says, Then sings my soul, my Savior, God to thee, how great thou art. A medley of songs about our great God. Let's sing it out this morning. Then sings my soul, my Savior, God to thee, how great thou art, how great. Thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. The splendor of the Rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God! Sing with me. How great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. And age to age he stands, and time is in his hands, beginning and the end, beginning and the end, the Godhead three in one, Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the Lamb, how great Consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder. Thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art. my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Great is the Lord, he is holy and just, by his power we trust in his love. Great is the Lord, he is faithful and true, by his mercy he proves he is love. Great is the Lord and worthy of glory.
We serve a great God, don't we? When we see the works of his hands, the works of his fingers, it's hard to even describe his majesty, his glory. We fall short. And the song says, indescribable. Let's sing together. From the highest of heights to the depths of the sea. Revealing your majesty From the colors of fall To the fragrance of spring Every creature unique in the song that it sings All exclaiming Indescribable Uncontainable You place the stars in the sky And you know them by name You are amazing God All powerful Untamable Awestruck we fall to our knees As we humbly proclaim You are amazing God told every lightning bolt where it should go or seen heavenly storehouses laden with snow who imagine the sun and give source to his light yet conceals it to bring us the coolness of night None can fathom, indescribable, uncontainable. You place the stars in the sky, and you know them by name. You are amazing, God. All-powerful, untamable, awestruck, we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim. You are amazing. stars in the sky and you know them by name you are amazing God incomparable unchangeable you see the depths of my heart and you love me the same you are amazing God indescribable Uncontainable, you place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are amazing, God. Amen. He is amazing, God. Thank you for singing. You may be seated. We're going to sing the chorus together. We'll let you sit for the first part sing it together. You did so well last night. By Christ we are forgiven. In Christ we are complete. For Christ we stand as the family of God, united, undivided. God's creation, diverse by His design, crafted for His glory in this present time, called to work together, laying down our pride, loving one another, serving side by side, by Christ. We are forgiven, in Christ we are complete. For Christ we stand as the family of God, united, undivided. We will pray. 
praise our Father, together we rejoice, walking in the Spirit, listening to His voice. We lay down our lives as an offering, unified in purpose, worshiping the King. By Christ, we are forgiven. In Christ, we are complete. For Christ, we stand as the family of God, united, undivided, and united we march on toward eternity, where united we will bow at our Savior's feet. Let's stand together, it's hard to stand. By Christ, we are forgiven. In Christ we are complete. For Christ we stand as the family of God, united, undivided. Amen. Thank you. Now you may be seated. How is everybody doing this morning? Did, did you all sleep well last night? Is there anybody that didn't sleep last night? Well, we can take care of that. We're memorizing three verses from the book of Ephesians that tie in with our theme. Undivided. By Christ, for, what is it? For, by, I get this so confused. By Christ, in Christ, for Christ. And uh, this week, we're going to ask you to memorize it, and we've got some ice cream cone coupons for the snack shop, and we gave a, away a boatload of free ice cream last week, so this is all good ice cream now this week. We got rid of all the stuff that's been in the freezer, all right? Is there anybody that wants to try it this morning? All right, Tony, stand up. Good. You did it. You did it. Good job. Somebody else want to try it this morning? All right. There is one body, one spirit. And just as you were called to one hope by your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God who is Father of all, Good job, Ryan. Good job. So most of you are familiar with the Colony Mercy Ministry, and those men memorize one verse of Scripture a day. So that means they will memorize 120 Bible verses during their stay. So three verses for you, that's a piece of cake, right? Well, it's actually an ice cream cone. Let's say it together. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Ephesians 4, 4-6. Pastor Mark Merle serves on our board of trustees. Pastor Mark, good to have you and your family here this week. Please lead us in prayer. Father, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will be glad and we will rejoice in it. Father, we thank you that uh, we worship that God is a spirit and we worship you in spirit and in truth. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come in our midst, Father. 
Thank you for what you will do. Speak through our speaker this morning, Father. Open our minds that we hear you in our spirit, spirit to spirit, Father, that our intellect will catch up later, Father, but that we have an encounter with you that brings change, brings us to the next level in Christ, Father. And we just thank you that you will have your way as we submit ourselves to your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. As the deer pants for the water, so our soul longs after him. Let's stand as we sing this song, As the Deer. As the deer panteth for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship thee. You alone are my strength, my shield. You may be seated. Yeah. 
So just a little background is how the Merrills came to America's Keswick. Three years ago, Robert was getting ready to do a conference for us and ended up in the hospital with kidney stones, and he couldn't do the music. And I'm like, oh, Lord, what are we going to do? And he called me, and he said, I, there's a couple that sang at our church on Sunday. I didn't actually get to hear them because I was in the hospital. They're staying in our campground. Do you think maybe you should go out and find out if they sing? I learned a lesson a long time ago. Don't relinquish the mic to anyone until you audition them. Right, Pastor Crawford? Well, I, I was desperate. And we brought them in, and they stood here and sing. And my staff were standing in the back, and their jaws dropped. They went, where did we find these people? Little did we know the script that God was going to write in taking Robert home to be with the Lord. And the question was, what are we going to do? Who's going to replace Robert? The answer to that question is very simple. Nobody. There is nobody that's going to replace Robert. But God worked it out so the Merrills could be with us this summer, and we are so excited and happy. Would you thank them for their ministry? So I'm excited to welcome our morning speaker. I have to tell you a story. He invited me to come to his church to speak. I had never preached in a, in a black church and I had two bottles of water before I walked up on the platform. <laughs> and as we're sitting up there, Willie, Pastor Willie said, would you please talk to our people about your observations about the service? Well, two and a half hours into the service, <laughs> now I got to tell you, in our white churches, nobody sits that long. <laughs> so I got up and I said, well, we would have been out of here an hour and a half ago. Our people get up and go to the bathroom all throughout the service. I don't know how you all sit here like this. The lady with the tambourine has to go. She's got way too much joy. The fellowship time was like 15 minutes. But I'll tell you what, I love that church, and I love Pastor Willie. Now, I'm supposed to introduce him as Dr. Reverend Wilbur Winburn, because that's how they know him in, our, in his church. But here at Keswick, it's Pastor Willie. And we just love him and appreciate his ministry. He's going to bless your heart. What a great tag team this week. Would you welcome my good friend, Pastor Willie Wimborn? Amen, amen, amen. Let's all pray together. Father, we love you. We praise you. We adore you. We magnify you. We thank you for this time. We pray that you would anoint us afresh and bless us with hearts and ears and minds to receive your word. Bless your word to each listening heart in Christ's name. We do pray and give thanks. Amen. Let's give God a hand of praise, y'all. Hallelujah. Glory. While you're turning to Ephesians chapter 4, first want to thank Bill. Thank you, Bill. And I do remember that Sunday he came and he was like, you know, I had water. I said, it's going to be all right. A great blessing. Thank you, Bill, to uh, Pastor Larissa and your wife. God bless you. Shout out to everybody here. It is a blessing to be here. We bring you greetings from the 19th Street Baptist Church in Philadelphia. Woo! Hallelujah. Shout out to my dear wife, Rosa. She's back home watching. My mother-in-law is here. Reverend Rod, where's mama? Amen. Reverend Ros and Werner and Shirley, they're here today. God bless you. And it is a great privilege and honor and blessing to be here because about 28 years ago, a pastor friend of mine said, you should go to America's Keswick. This is before GPS. <laughs> and 
<laughs> we had a map. Where are young people at? A map. And we're driving and driving and driving, and we don't know where we're going. And we finally, we finally get here. And we were like, we didn't see a lot of black people here, Bill. Where's Bill? We didn't see a lot, you know, we, we really didn't, you know, but we, we saw the colony immersed. We saw people, we said, hey, how you doing? We made friends and, and some 28 years later, our kids served here on staff. We, we started at three days in Victory Hall. We, the next year we came back, it was a whole five days and for every, except for the COVID, we had a COVID year, we've been coming here. And so on behalf of the Winborn family, we love America's Keswick and we won't take it back. This week, Ephesians chapter 4, beginning verse 1. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling in which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness and long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Here's our verse for this week. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Amen. This week we're going to talk about living a lifestyle of resilient unity. A lifestyle of resilient unity unity. Somebody say amen. amen. 1799, Kentucky, open area. It's a place called uh, Cane Ridge. And as the West opened up, people started to come and they started to gather. And they started to have uh, revival services, church services. And in 1799, we had the Methodist Church along with the Presby's and the Baptists start to come together for services just like these teaching and preaching and singing and praying. The next year, in 1800, the number swelled up to over 15,000 people. And the Cambridge Revival was part of the second great awakening that opened up the West. And what happens every year, people started to come together, Baptists, Presby's, Methodists, and they had what's called camp meeting. And that, that theme, it, it spread throughout. After the Civil War, it spread. Violent New Jersey, camp meeting. Watch this, here in Ocean Grove, camp meeting. Hmm? Somebody say amen. You got to talk back. They got to talk to me every now and then, Pat. They got to talk back to me. Huh? And then here we look here at America's Keswick. Sandy. <laughs> Harvey Cedars. And here we are. And look at it. We have people from different denominations, different backgrounds, mindsets, all coming together for services to give God praise. Reminds me of the Negro spiritual. Walk together, children, don't you get weary. Walk together, children, oh, don't you get weary. Walk together, children, don't you get weary. There's a great camp meeting in the promised land. So here we are. All together, different denominations, background, people. And what, I, and what I love about Bill, Bill, when Bill came to see us, he was like, hey, how you doing, Willie? And I watched Bill over the years embrace every nation, different people. When you come on the weekend, you got the Asian church, you got the black African American church, you got the Latinas, you got everybody here on the land coming together. Uh, we, were, we had a church retreat here a while back. After lunch, we went out on the lake. We were, we were back over here, and we were, we were singing. And we had our his, that Hispanic Women's Conference was here that weekend. I was taking a picture of our folks singing, and we're just you know, recording the memory. And behind me, the women from the Hispanic church came down, and we all joined together in singing God's praise. There's going to be a great camp meeting in the promised land. Well, Ephesians, Apostle Paul. Uh, how many of y'all remember Paul? 
he persecuted Christians. He killed Christians, right? Until one day, God, what? God got his attention. Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Don't you know it's hard to kick against the pricks? And God calls him and uses him to go to preach to the Gentiles. And here I love Ephesians. Ephesians, the first part of the book it deals with is doctrine. You know, who we are in Christ. Just reading the first, the first chapter, it, it'll make you shout. It'll make you clap. In fact, if, you, if you're in a church and you can't clap or shout this, today, you just, hey, glory. <laughs> So it's all right, huh? Who we are, we're seated in heavenly places, accepted in the beloved, huh? Chosen him before the foundation of the world. Chapter 2, for by grace are we saved, and then we have the mystery in chapter 3. And then here in chapter 4, the application, as we're called to do what? Live together in unity. Live in unity. Hmm? The, it's about being mature in Christ is the overall. So the lesson we have here is that we can live a lifestyle of unity, united in heart and mind. A lifestyle of unity, resilient unity, and the connection, we're united what? Our heart and our mind. How so? How do we see this in the text? We're going we're gonna to just take little chunks of this along the way. Our, our focus is just verse 1 for this morning. I, therefore, a prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling which you have been called. Stop. So the first lesson is that, that we are prisoners of Christ. And so it says, I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, stop. Here, Paul says, I'm a prisoner. I'm a doulos. I'm a bondservant. I'm a slave of the Lord. But really, here we see Paul has a dual status. He is a prison of the Lord, but he's also incarcerated. He's in prison. These are these prison epistles. He's got this, this dual status going on here. And so the lesson we see that with Paul right now as he's serving is that the saints can serve in some very severe situations. You can be going through a, a tough time and you can still serve, mm -hmm. realizing who you are. Even right now, we have what? We have dual. Listen, Paul said, yeah, I got dual citizenship. Later on, he says, he says uh, my citizenship is up in, is up in heaven. Hmm. And so even for us right here, we're here in Whiting, New Jersey. Pull out your driver's license where you may live, whether it's New Jersey, or North Carolina, South Carolina, Atlanta. I'm Pennsylvania. But guess what? I also have dual citizenship. I am a part of the family of faith. My name is written on the rolls in glory. And so I can serve in some tough, severe situations. Watch this. Joseph, he was a prisoner. Brothers put him in the pit. Then watch this. Later on, he's lied on by Mrs. Potiphar. Guess where he winds up, y'all? In prison. And the reoccurring theme along the way in Genesis, it says, and the Lord was? Come on, somebody. The Lord was with Joseph. The Lord was with It went from bad to worse. The Lord was with Joseph, and God is doing what? He's preparing, and he's using him. Look at Daniel. Hmm? Look at Daniel. Exile. Deported. He's a governor, a leader. He's not able to enjoy family and enjoy Israel. But what does he do? He serves and he prays. I told my prayer partners this morning, we're going to talk about prayer. He prays, right? He, he is a prisoner and he what? He prays. Hmm. And I love Paul and Silas. Yeah, they're, they're in prison too. Right? They in Philippi. The little girl has a demon and just got on Paul's last nerve and he said, you know what, look, be out of the little girl. Her masters got mad because he messed with their money. When they mess with your money, you get mad. Somebody should have said, somebody should have said, but the little girl is well. No! Put him in an inner prison. They're prisoners. In jail, in Philippi, also prisoners of God. Now, what do they do? They hold prayer meeting at midnight. <laughs> huh? Old preacher said, said uh -uh. Paul said, well, let's pray. Father, we count it a blessing to be able to share the gospel and be in this prison. Hallelujah. <laughs> Silas said, well, no, nah, we, we, we need to pray. Come on, amazing grace, how sweet the sound, huh? 
Let's pray some more. Lord, we thank you that you're you. Thank you for the little girl. Lord, bless her. So I said, well, let's, let's sing some more. Come thy fount of every blessing. And so when you have the combination of, watch this, of prayer and singing God's praise and prayer and singing God's praise. And watch this. In my situation, I'm a prisoner. Guess what? God shows up. Oh, bless his name. Oh, so, so. no, he shows up. Earth rocks and reels, huh? The, the, the chains fall off. They fall off, huh? Come on. They fall off. Flipping jail is like, oh my goodness, I'm done. I'm done. Do thyself no harm. <laughs> We're all here. Flipping says, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold it. Wait a minute, what must I do to be saved? Wait, what? but I love this part. Wait a minute, y'all. My wife is not going to believe this. <laughs> Y'all have to come home. <laughs> I want with y'all, and you have to tell my wife what happened here in Philippi, Macedonia. And so from that, we had this what? This great letter of joy. So the implication is that we, you know, we're, we're prisoners of Christ. Now, 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 now watch this. Watch this. Uh, I think about addiction ministry and here at Kez Bar's place. If you don't know Christ, you're also a prisoner. Mmm, mmm. Maybe you didn't know it. Mmm. Oh. Satan has his hands on you, right? World system has you, and all of a sudden you like, watch this. You say, ever ask a question? Those, how many folk have ever been, you know, caught up in addiction and know what's going on? You don't have to raise your hand, but but you ask yourself the question, how did I get here? I am far from the peaceful shores. And I, 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 I'm. Now here's other implications, you know, the positive implications for you know, us being prisoners of Christ. Christ loves us. And when you think about prisons, what, what's there? Boundaries. Mm. So God, we are prisoners of Christ. And he has a way of fencing us in and putting those boundaries there for us. So we don't, we don't what? We don't go to the left. Go to the right. Look at that dual, that dual, that dual status thing going on. Because guess what? We love the Lord. We're in Christ. But what does Paul say in Romans chapter 7? I think the pastor said the last night, he said, you know, mature Christians, they don't say what they won't do. I said, hmm. Paul said, there is a war in these members. When I would do good, the good that I should do, I don't. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from the body of this death? Right, you've you just been in church. Hallelujah, fire baptized, glory to God, vapors coming off you, you're driving down the road. <laughs> Come on, Zed, listen, it's real, it's real. Come on, Some, it's Ted, Ted, Ted's on the Harley, he's rolling, rolling. Just coming from Keswick, glory to the Lamb, thank you, Jesus. And somebody cuts you off, and just that fast. Come on, somebody. Somebody mess with one of your kids, your grandkids, huh? Just that you didn't say it, but there was that real quick when you thought it. <laughs> and, and the boundaries, God does what? He brings us back in line. He brings us back in line. You go, oh, if I confess my sins, he's faithful, just forgive me. Listen, I got to remember that I'm not my own. I've been bought with a price. I'm, I'm a prisoner of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when I do mess up, I must do what? I got to confess my sins. If I confess my sins, he's faithful and just to do what? Forgive us and the cleanse us of all unrighteousness. We are prisoners of Christ. King of Prussia was uh, going to the prison, looking at the people in prison, and they were going, people, the, the prison was saying, King, let me out. I'm innocent. I'm innocent. I didn't do anything. King, let me out. I've been here. Uh, it's, it's unjust. And there was another guy standing on the side, didn't say a word. So, so the king said, hey, hey, buddy, come here. What are you in for? Oh, I'm in for armed robbery. And, and I did it. I, 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 did, I did the crime. I'm, I'm, I'm doing the time. King called the warden and said, hey, come here. Come here. Let this man go. He said, we're not going to have this man, this honest man, corrupt the morals of these other prisoners and let him go. <laughs> 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 
My point is that we're prisons of Christ. We love the Lord, trapped in this flesh. Sometimes it gets a little haywire, it gets a little crazy. But we are able to do what? Live a lifestyle of resilient unity. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord. And he says, beseech you to walk worthy. Wait, we stop again. We are prisoners of Christ. We are on the pathway with Christ. Beseech you to walk what? Walk worthy. How many of y'all saw me this morning? Anybody see me this morning? This morning I was out around the lake walking. Rose and I, we're new, we're new grandparents. Little Riley and little Brielle and crawling now and holding self up and we're waiting for them to say, the baby took the first steps unaided. Looking forward to be able to get the grandkids and do what? And walk. I love walking. It's good. But here's the thing. It's my prayer walk. Walking with Jesus in the morning, praying, asking God. To, I go, God, I need help. Help me, Lord. And I cast my cares upon him, walking. And so in the Bible, we see a lot of walking. Adam and Eve, right? God walked with them, what? In the cool of the day. Love Enoch. Enoch walked with God. Was not. Because God what? God took him. Can you imagine Enoch never, he never came home? Huh? Help me, Lord. This element of, of walking worthy, walking in balance, walking in equilibrium, it speaks about our lifestyle. Mm. Code of, the Christian code of conduct. Who are you? How how you living? How we saying? How you living? What you doing? Don't look at me. Where you at? How'd you do this week? We need again accountability. Hmm. Lifestyle. God does what? Right. Wants us to walk worthy with Him. And you see it all all in Ephesians. Walk worthy. Walk in the light. It speaks about your character and your personality. Watch this, when no one's looking. Be a person of integrity. Walk worthy when you have been where you have been called. So watch this. Abraham. Yeah. Uh, walk before me and be thou what? And be thou perfect. And as we're walking, we're called to do what? Walk by faith and not by sight. And see, that, that's the tension of this in this walking, because sometimes it, it does not, it doesn't make any sense at all. Walk worthy. Walk worthy. Walk in honor. Walk in integrity. Walk with character. Have a lifestyle of honesty and trust. And then, you know, Paul goes on. He says we have to do what? Some things we got to do, right? We got to get rid of, take off the old man and put on the, New man. Paul says what? Be, you don't know how to walk? Be imitators of God, dear children, and walk in love. Remember the old, I think it was, uh, I forget what, what rock group that was. Uh, I think it was, um, might have been Led Zeppelin and Run DMC. Anybody remember go way back? Or Aerosmith, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Aerosmith and Run DMC. And it said what? Walk this way, right? Yeah. So we are called to walk after Jesus, walk before Jesus, huh? In a lifestyle. Watch this. I think about Galatians. We are Jesus with skin on, y'all. And that's the beautiful thing about unity, right? We're Jesus with skin on. Let me, let me back up for a minute. Watch this. A few years ago, a pandemic, uh, we all saw what took place in, in Minnesota in the death of George Floyd. Mm -hmm. And we see right now all this craziness in the world. You cannot, come on. Ukraine. What's going on in Ukraine? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Buffalo, Uvalde. These are real. This is real. Huh? 
And what we did at our church, we did a Bible study. You know what it was called? Faces, not races. Ah. Oh, you don't hear me. You don't hear me. Faces, not races. So when I'm looking at you, I have my glasses on that you are my brother and sister in Christ. First and foremost, made by God. And you got red blood running in your veins just like I do. And God made you and God loves you. And watch it in lifestyle. When we walk across the room and say, hi, how you doing? My name is Pastor Willie. What's your name? And we start to talk and we share and we start to pray together. Guess what? The fact that you're a woman or you're black or you're white or you're Latino, guess what? That, that, that kind of goes away because the heart, love the Lord, love our families. You ought to say amen, somebody. Amen. And that way when you, when you watch it, when you, when, when, when young people, when you do that, then we don't live a life where I'm nervous, I'm scared, and I can't walk across and say, yo, how you doing? What's going on? That's like Ted. He's like, sitting next to him, I said, hey, man, my name is Wilbur. I'm Ted. Hey, man. Praise the Lord. It's just that easy. It's not hard. Teach your kids. It's not hard. Say hi. How you doing? Watch this. How can I pray for you? Jesus with skin. And I know we have different concerns and issues. That's easy. John Wesley was walking with the one of his buddies, his buddy was concerned about all his problems, all the concerns. They're walking along. He says, you know, Pastor John Wesley, I don't know what I'm going to do with trials and tribulations and peril and problems. I don't know. And, 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 and John, watch John Wesley, they go and they see this cow at the wall. And the cow is looking over the wall. And Pastor John Wesley said, you need to do that. You need to stop looking at the wall of your problems and look over the wall and look up to the Lord Jesus Christ, who's the author and finisher of your faith. So here it is. We say we can live a lifestyle of resilient unity. Number one, I am a prisoner of the Lord Jesus Christ, and he loves me. And the second thing is that we're on the pathway with Christ. Old Spirit, I want Jesus, what, to walk with me while I'm on my pilgrimage. Yes, I want my Jesus to walk with me. Yes, we are prisoners, prisoners of Christ. We're on the path with Christ. And the third lesson we have here, we are a part of the plan of Christ. We're a part of the plan. He has a master plan. He's got a great plan for us. Look at the text. Again, I therefore prisoner of the Lord. Beseech you, beg you, urge you that you do what? Walk worthy, lifestyle, huh? Here it is. Of the calling with which you were called. Of the calling of which you've been called. Hmm, the plan. 1966, TV. There was um, one of my favorite programs as a kid growing up. Let me see if I can. Where, where, where's Nia and Alicia? Let me see if I can get the music going. Right? It's Mission Impossible, right? And you had to watch. So, you know, you got Mr. Phelps, right? And he's, you know, going to try to take care of the dictators, the bad guys. And he's in an isolated place. And he always goes and finds a secluded place, right? And he's got the file. And he had the tape recorder. Somebody said, what's a tape recorder? <laughs> right, he had a camera and he go, all right, Mr. Mr. Phelps, this is the person, this is what they're doing, they're doing this and they're doing that, and you have this mission. Now, here, here's here, we always, every week, right? Right? The mission, right? If you decide to take the mission, and my will, if you get caught, we will not say we know anything about you. And then finally it says, and this tape will do what? Self-destruct in five minutes. <laughs> right? This, this is, when you look at this right here, the calling with you've been called. So watch this. So the, the, the first calling, that's the noun. The second calling, that's the verb. So watch this. So it's almost like you got, you got headquarters is calling. And then you, us, and we, we have the opportunity to accept or to reject. 
And so watch this. So here we have the calling from heaven. God is calling us to himself. And then we have what? We have the option to do what? To accept it or to reject the call. To be a part of his plan or not be a part of his plan. Are you with me right now? So God has a plan for your life and my life. You, you, go, you go back to Abraham. God had a plan. Hmm? Sometimes it doesn't make sense either. It doesn't make sense. Uh, Abram, Sarah, you all are going to have a son. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> You got, you know, we got, you know, you know, like, you know, we, we like just a little old Lord, you know, right? Don't you wish you'd been there? Is anything too hard for God? No, 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 right? God's got a plan. And then we get in trouble because we try to do what? We try to help God, right? Help. Don't hurt me, sisters. Sarah said, Abram, Abe, take one. Go on in there with Hagar. <laughs> no, no, look, come on, shake your head and go, whatever you say, dear. <laughs> no, that's not what God said. Then Ishmael's coming along. Ishmael's there, right? Pray for me. Pray for me, sisters. Right? And it ain't going well. Right? Can, can you imagine Hagar's looking at Sarah? <laughs> <laughs> it got so bad. Listen, come on, y'all. Thank you. Thank you to this day. Watch it. Abram, I don't know what you're going to do. <laughs> but Hagar and the child got to go. The bag is packed. The water is there. Get to stepping. <laughs> and then what is this way? God has a plan. He says, I got a plan. God has a plan, y'all. Look at Moses, huh? The prince of Egypt. God has a plan. He's got this, he, he's fighting with this dual identity. You know, he's a Hebrew, but he's also an Egyptian, and he's fighting back and forth. God has a plan. He's going to use Moses to lead the children of Israel out. Look at Joseph. Again, God has a plan. So God, he has a plan for our lives. Jesus, he has a plan. Watch that. He did what? He called. Call disciples. Follow me. I'll make you fishers of men. He had a plan. Look at the plan. He knows the plan before we know the plan, huh? He knows the plan. Right? Peter? We're in the upper room here. Before the night's over, you're, you're, you're going to say you didn't know me. No. Yes. No. <laughs> they grab Jesus. <laughs> There's Peter falling from a warming his hand. Little girl said, hey, weren't you with him? No. <laughs> Somebody else comes. Yeah. Yeah, you, your speech betrays you. Uh-uh. Mm-mm-mm. The mic comes again. Yes, it was. Starts cussing like a drunken sailor. All in right. All in Rome, Romans chapter 7. All right. Uh -uh. And then, as God would have it, his eyes meet with Jesus and he weeps bitterly. Hmm? Listen, God has a plan for our lives. Jeremiah 29 11. God says, I know thoughts I think about you. Good and not evil to give you a hope and a future. All right, we got to hasten. How's my time? Okay, we're almost done here. But again, Resilient unity. Resilient unity. And then now, now you think about that. Oh, what's that all about? Watch this. Take $100, $100 bill. Crinkle it up. Throw it down. Stomp on it. Turn it. Put it in the mud. Is everybody with me? Sp spin on it? <laughs> huh? <laughs> right, let Fido, Fido, here, here, Fido. <laughs> it still spins. It still spins. So we might be pressed down. Guess what? We get back up. We stand. You look at that text. Live up. 
Why? Because Jesus Christ, he gave up that we can do it, that he can, he can build up, that we can stand up, that we can be mature, that we can grow up. It's all rooted in alignment. Alignment. Oh, watch this. Go back. Aligning our heart and our head with Jesus. There's a story of this boat, vessel, and there was a certain port. It's a very dangerous port in order to, to, to pull in. If you didn't go in the right way, you would, you would uh, you crash. And they had three major lights there in the harbor. And the captain only knew that they were on the right path to pull into the harbor when those three lights, when you move the vessel and the three lights became one light. And that's how we, he knew I could pull in to the harbor. The lesson as we start in verse 1 is that when we are in alignment with the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, huh? We live in alignment, and alignment does what? It assures the victory. That when I am in alignment, watch this, when I'm in alignment with God, alignment with, with his people, his service, his plan, it does what? It assures. Victory. How do I know? Because I know another prisoner. Help me, Holy Ghost. His name is Jesus. He came into his own, but his own would do it. Receive him not. Oh, bless his name. And guess what? He, he was born of a virgin. They had, watch this. The wise men, they came from Babylon, Mesopotamia. They came on that pathway to come and give their gifts to Jesus Christ, the king. Where is he who is king of the Jews? And there, Jesus Christ, there, I, I wish I was able to walk with him. There on the banks of the Jordan, baptized by his cousin John. Walking along the shores and calling disciples, follow me, I'll make you what I'll make you, fishers of men. Stopping by Mary and Martha's house, huh? Oh, later on, they said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Jesus said, but no, there is, there is a plan. There, my Lord and Savior, in fulfillment to the plan that was set before the foundation of the world, in fulfillment to Scripture, where it says that he was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquities, the chastise of his peace was placed, and by his stripes we were healed. Jesus Christ, the King of glory, there he rides into Jerusalem. They cry, Hosanna. But at the end of the week, they cry what? Crucify him, crucify him. And here the king of glory, the Lord, mighty is now a prisoner. Whipped and beaten and scourged and spat upon. But according to the plan, he said, nobody takes my life. He said, I have power to lay it down and power to pick it up again. And for this cause, I came into the world that I might be able to save sinful man and woman, that they might become a part of my body and the family of faith, all according to the plan. There is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who, who, who paused on Damascus Road. There, going down the Via de la Rosa, the outskirts of Jerusalem, to a place called Calvary, Golgotha, prisoner, the king of glory, and he's beaten and battered and bruised and wounded and killed for, uh, for God so loved the world. He gave his son and Jesus Christ, Mary's baby, war horse from Zion, lily of the valley and the bright morning star. He died for you and for me. Midnight met noonday, earth rocked and real, and Jesus, he gave up the ghost and died. And as he is dying, guess what he does? He prays. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Huh? Can I get a witness? In between two thieves, huh? And one got a glimpse at, Lord, remember me. And Jesus says, this day. Watch it. That thief aligned himself with the king of glory, and it didn't look like he was the king of glory, but the epitaph, he, he read the epitaph over the car. Jesus Christ, the king of the Jews. Lord, remember me. And Jesus, this day you'll be with me in paradise. And our Lord, he died. 
But according to the plan, that's not the end of the story. Oh, bless his holy. I get excited about it. Oh, glory. Thanks be to God. He came down off the tree of the cross. They put him there. Huh. Look, look at Mary and the, and the women. They're, they're pensive. They're praying all night Friday, all night Saturday. But we got good news. Ha. Thanks be to God. Early Sunday morning, Jesus Christ rose with all power. And when we're in alignment with him, staying in our lane, aligned with him, it assures that we have the victory and we can grow up in him being mature, that we can tell somebody else about the man from Galilee. Amen. You ought to say amen. amen. And he's coming back. The plan is not out. He's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. Yes, we are prisoners on the path, and he's got a perfect plan. And as we're in alignment with him, it assures us how do you know? Because I read the end of the story. It assures us the victory. There's going to be a great camp meeting in the promised land. John on the Isle of Patmos said, I looked, and behold, there was a number that no man could number of every nation and kindred and tribe and tongue singing God's praises. Oh, hell, oh, hell, the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him, crown him, crown him, Lord of all. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We adore you. We magnify you. God, we rejoice that we are in you and you are in us. Thank you for that oneness that we share, and we thank you that you have assured us. Put your spirit in us to assure us that in the name of Jesus, we have the victory, God. So we thank you. Help us, Father, that there will be alignment of our heads and our hearts, our hands and our feet, that we might glorify you. Bless your word, Jesus, in heart. In Jesus' name, we pray and give thanks. Let every heart say amen. I told my guests last week, we had a church from Philadelphia, 150 of them, and they were noisy. And I said, this week's going to be so quiet. <laughs> I love it. Wow. Did you enjoy that this morning? Amen. Amen. All right, we got a big day here at America's Keswick. Just a reminder that all the messages are recorded during the week. You can go back on our Keswick YouTube channel and check those all out. And I want to encourage you, send that link to a friend. We still have a couple rooms open this week. You pick up that phone and say, you need to be here this week at America's Keswick. You're missing some great preaching and worship. Okay, what's happening today, Dr. Rainey Forrest and right, Tarzana? Professor. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's a beautiful day out there. So I don't think we need it now, but there is a coffee break <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> at 1045. And then after that at 11? Uh, at 11 o'clock, we have two seminars. Uh, there, first, we have Pat Jacoby. Hers is going to be in the Millsaps room. Hi, my name is Pat, and I am a master herbalist. I'm going to be speaking on emergencies big and small. We have seen many disasters across the country in the past number of years, the past decade plus. And it has been devastating catching people off guard, not prepared for an emergency. So we're going to be talking about how to prepare yourself in your home for that, and also talking about smaller mm -hmm. emergencies that you might come up with more often. Thank you, Pat and Bill Cook. This is going to be in Great. the auditorium, both at 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock. Uh, Children's ministry. If you just went through COVID, the pandemic, all that stuff, your children's ministry is hurting like many of your other ministries. How do you restart that? A uh, couple of ideas I have for you. Nothing earth shattering, but it'll get you going, get you motivated. And how does it look? Well, you know what? Your ministry is different than everybody else's. Your children's ministry will look different most likely, but I can tell you who the power comes from, and that's from Jesus. Amen. Sorry, I will not be nearly as exciting as our speaker today. I've really <laughs> not got. But it'll be good, so I invite you to stay for that. Thank you, Bill. Yep, again, that'll be in here at You're 11 o'clock. Then after our seminars at 12 o'clock, we have lunch. 
At one o'clock, we have a craft. This is our craft that Ooh. we'll be offering over in the SML lounge. Uh, it's uh, a, a little book folding craft. There will be a sign-up sheet at the front desk. It's going to be in the SML lounge at one o'clock. Uh, Facebook, yes. maybe you can wave. And yep, it's a ten dollar fee. And uh, yeah, but it's really awesome. It's a fun time. It's going to be fun. And she provides the book, right? She provides the book. She provides the materials, the background. Yeah, everything. Okay. Good. Yep, you just have to bring yourself. And, and ten dollars, yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then at, we also have the pool is open, the lakefront is open, or the deep dock is open, right? And we have our leisure time. You can leisure just time. enjoy the grounds, Beautiful walk Keswick around. Grounds. And, yeah. Yep. There's what a do we swing have by the lower lake. The swing, yeah. Yep. And then at two o'clock, we have a fun activity. It's called Whatever Floats Your Boat, okay? Cardboard boat making competition at the lake here. Yes, you can cheer for that. Go ahead, cardboard boat making competition. Starts at two o'clock, bring your family out. We're gonna have any amount of teams. Uh, we'll have all the supplies for you. Yep. Begins at two once again, then we'll, we'll set sail at three o'clock. So you guys can come out and watch that. Yep. Um, the snack shop will be open from two to four. And then we have whatever, uh, winter before dinner at 5 o'clock. We're going to be playing a, call, a game, game called Tap It tonight. Very fun. So that's taking place in the lakeside family room area right before dinner. Yeah. And we'll enjoy our dinner and, uh, and then have the uh, evening meeting and go from there. And my guess is somebody's going to take a nap. It Oof, won't be me, man. but somebody's going to take a nap. I'm going to try. <laughs> do, you, do you have anything else of importance So. So oh, why did I ask? <laughs> so we were talking about Tarzan last night. Once again, unfortunately, he couldn't be here. But he does enjoy a snack every once in a while. He likes, you guys know what his favorite snack is? Bananas with branch dressing. <laughs> That's disgusting. That's super gross. <laughs> no, I was like, ah. Uh. <laughs> He's like, I like that too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know his favorite type of, of dancing? Swing. <laughs> <laughs> And then the, every once in a while he'll go out to dinner. Do you know what his favorite style of dinner is? Vine dining. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Enjoy your day. Oh my goodness. Dave Lewis has books there. I want to encourage you to check them out. The proceeds go to Barbara's Place and the Colony Mercy. Nia and Alicia have their products. Uh, Joyce has stuff over there in the corner. And then as you come out of the uh, dining room, there's a lot of gifts and all kinds of cool items there. I want to encourage you to check it out. Naya and Alicia, let's uh, close with a song. Well, after that message, I, I know we have hope because Christ is still alive, right? Yeah. Amen. Because he lives, I can face today, I can face tomorrow. Let's stand together and sing, Because He Lives. We'll start with a chorus. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. his son God sent his son they called him Jesus he came to love heal and forgive he bled and died to buy my Savior lives, sing it out, because he lives, I can face tomorrow, because he lives, all fear is gone, because I know he holds the future. And life is worth the 
Bill Cook, would you dismiss us with the benediction, please? Amen. Hey, grab a cup of coffee, come back from the seminars, check out the product tables, and have a great day at America's Cousin.